Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. For the times we have forgotten God, Lord have mercy. For the times we have neglected our neighbor, Christ have mercy. For the times we have not lived up to our created image, Lord have mercy. Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Would you sit, please? A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water or roasted over the fire with its heads, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals, on all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this, the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to be betray him. And during supper, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, 
but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he had said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the authorities, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak in the name of God, the lover, the beloved, and the love sharer. Amen. Amen. For the people of God in Jerusalem, on what will turn out to be this fateful night of Jesus' journey, it is a time of anticipation and preparation. Jesus and his friends are among the crowds gathered in the city for the approaching Passover festival, in which Israel's people will remember and celebrate their emancipation from Egyptian bondage. But remembering of Passover isn't an ordinary remembering. It is memory as a radical act, a setting apart of the community in opposition to the powers and principalities of the world. Passover is memory as identity. Jesus and his friends feel this opposition to power and authority more deeply than most on this night. The disciples are probably feeling pretty whiplashed by now. Just a few days ago, there was so much hope crowds had hailed Jesus as Messiah, son of David, with hosannas so loud they couldn't hear themselves think, and palm branches so thick on the ground that the donkey's feet never touched the dirt. But now all that remains of the palm carpet is a stray frond here and there, curling and forgotten by the roadside. Jerusalem is on edge this night. The crowds who had followed Jesus were now simmering. The Roman and temple authorities are ready to pounce. So the disciples have gathered surreptitiously to prepare for the Passover meal, alert for watching eyes as they carry out Jesus's careful instructions. 
as they meet in the upper room. What is usually a feast of celebration feels more like a wake. Jesus arrives, and for once he seems at a loss for words. He seems withdrawn, somehow both focused and distracted at the same time. Quietly and suddenly, he gets up. He takes off his cloak, picks up a basin of water and a towel, and then he kneels in front of Andrew. The air is electric as he, water pours over Andrew's feet into the basin. And then Jesus moves to Philip, and then Judas, and then Nathaniel, and then Peter. At first, Peter draws back in dismay. What kind of a king does this? What kind of a Messiah stoops to serve in such a menial yet intimate way? Peter protests. Jesus persists. Peter surrenders. Lord, not my feet only, but my head and my hands as well. Oh, Peter. The water splashes softly, and the towel gently dries. Then the bowl and the towel are put away, and Jesus puts his cloak back on. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Mandatum. Mondi. Do this. Serve one another. Even if it's out of our comfort zone. Even if we have to go out in the rain. Because God doesn't call us into our comfort zone. Jesus says that this is what we do for one another. Wash, love, serve. And then offer our own careworn, calloused, travel-weary, and broken selves to be comfort, comforted and healed in turn. Giving and receiving in a constant flow of care in community. This is what love looks like. This is who we are. This is how people will know us. Do this, he says, because I love you. There is more to the story of this night, which is best seen in conversation with the Last Supper accounts in Mark and Matthew and Luke because this foot washing story is only in John so we see them all in conversation. Jesus takes bread grown from the wheat of the earth made by human hands and he blesses and he breaks and he shares it. This is my body. He takes wine made from grapes that have suffered, sweetened by thirst for rain, crushed and aged in darkness. He blesses and shares it. This is my blood. Do this. Remember me. And in remembering, be who I call you to be. Here, bread and wine become sacrament and mystery, a sign of Christ with us, not as a distant memory, but as active, enlivening presence. When we eat this bread, we say yes to the holy in all of God's creation. And when we drink from this cup, we witness to the suffering of the world. We are 
what we eat. Jesus shows us through symbol and sacrament that the dream of God is about compassion and justice and healing and forgiveness and that the realization of the dream will require love, service, love, suffering, and more love. This is not the way of empire. And that is the point. This is a radical act of memory, setting followers of Jesus apart in opposition to principalities and powers of the world. It is all about turning the world right side up by turning it upside down. We are what we eat, the body of Christ. Eucharist means nothing if we remain at the table. We must go out, yes, even in the rain. We cannot just acknowledge the holy in all creation. We cannot just acknowledge the suffering of the world. We must actively witness to both. We must also wash feet. We must serve. Do this. Do these things. Trusting that the God who created and liberated us will continue to do so, liberating us even from the power of death until the dream of God is fulfilled. Amen.
you will find the prayers of the people on this bulletin insert. In the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father through Christ, the Savior of the world. Father, on this night, the night he was betrayed, your Son, Jesus Christ, washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church. Lord, hear us. On this night, he prayed for those who were to believe through his disciples' message. We pray for the mission of your church. Lord, hear us. On this night, he commanded his disciples to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved. Lord, hear us. On this night, he reminded his disciples that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us. us On this night, he accepted the cup of death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, you commanded us to love one another. Let us show forth the power of your love made strong amongst us, so that by this love the world may know that we are your disciples. Most merciful Lord, your love compels, compels us, us to, to come, come in. in. Our, our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were, were not fit <coughs> even to eat the crumbs, crumbs from, from under your, under your table. table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Would you please stand? Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, nor let them be afraid. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. If you'd like to sit for a moment, please. Uh, With this liturgy for Maundy Thursday, we begin uh, what is called the Triduum, the great three days of Easter. And the liturgy tonight uh, doesn't end in the usual way. So there is no post-communion prayer, there is no blessing, there is no final hymn. After the uh, distribution of communion, uh, the consecrated elements are then removed to the altar in the chapel, which is known as the altar of repose. And you'll find that in Mark's marked contrast to the church, uh, the chapel remains decorated rather beautifully to symbolize 
the Garden of Gethsemane. And Christ, in his sacramental form, will remain on the altar of repose throughout the night and all of tomorrow. And so the way this service ends is rather abruptly. Because in a way, there is one long liturgical action which begins now and ends only with the great liturgy of Good Friday tomorrow evening. So tonight you'll find uh, at the end of the uh, procession of the sacrament to the altar of repose, uh, the altar party will come back and will begin the stripping of the altars and the washing of the altar. And you may leave at that point or you may just remain seated uh, to witness this momentous event uh, and the passion narrative from Mark's gospel will be read during that. And at the end of that, uh, then you leave quietly, please. Try and uh, keep your social greetings to a minimum, uh, at least until you get outside, because we want to symbolize um, the uh, description that we have in the gospel of the disciples leaving in haste and in somewhat disarray. So we now continue this celebration of Maundy Thursday with the Offertory Hymn.
watch is kept from tonight through the night and into tomorrow morning and concludes at morning prayer at 9 a.m. There, you may have already signed up for, to keep the watch for one hour, uh, following our Lord's request to his disciples, can you watch one hour with me? Uh, in the e-news today, uh, there will be a separate link to the live stream image of the altar of repose, which will allow you to keep watch for the hour at home. Would you stand? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, good Father of us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Glory. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and said, this is my body which is given for you. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He gave it and said, this is my blood shed for you all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world, this is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now that, these, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you.
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died and is raised to new life for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Loving Father, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us with your Spirit that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven and we share the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
sun and him, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though they all fall away, I will not. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. Peter, vehemently responding, If I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. And they went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping. For their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Rise, let us be going, for see my betrayer is at hand. And immediately while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd of swords and clubs, from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign. The one I shall kiss is the man, seize him and lead him away safely. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Master, and he kissed him. And they laid hands on Jesus and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled. And a young man following him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body, they seized him, but he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. And they led Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the scribes and the elders were assembled. And Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards and warming himself by the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many bore false witness against him, and their witness did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made <coughs> with hands. Yet not even so did their testimony agree. 
And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he was silent and made no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? I am, Jesus replied. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At this, the high priest tore his mantle and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him and cover his face and strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! And the guards received him with blows. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the maids of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were a Nazarene. But he denied it. I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway. And the maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while, while again, the bystanders said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the cock crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me, and th three times. And he broke down, and he wept. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes and the whole council held a consultation. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, You have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate wondered. Now at the feast he used to release for them any one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder and insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he was wont to do for them. And he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate said again to them, Then what shall I do with this man whom you call the king of the Jews? And they all replied, Crucify him. Crucify. 